In an uncertain and unpredictable world, there should be comfort in science. The rigor of experimental practice, the painstaking employment of scientific method. But progress in research is far from a smooth ride. The eureka moments that have defined our world require one extra ingredient. Of course, science, success in science, discovery, requires luck, involves luck. On the other hand, I think one prepares oneself for that luck. Uh, I think that's the difference. Luck meant Archimedes had a bath that fateful day, but it was the years of study that laid the foundations for the groundbreaking insight. In the words of vaccine pioneer Louis Pasteur, in the fields of observation, chance favors the prepared mind and it's often the tiny details or apparent mistakes that hold the key. For haematologist Peter Argray, there was one protein turning up in all his tests that by all rights shouldn't have been there, a protein that would eventually lead to a Nobel Prize. In, in our case with the water channel proteins, we were at work on the rhesus blood group antigen, which had never been understood at a molecular level, and we discovered a new molecule which I think a smarter and more focused scientist would have ignored. But having a bit of this attention deficit can sometimes be helpful. Like thousands of researchers, curiosity had got the better of him. The few preliminary investigations he and his team made only deepened the mystery. It turned out to be one of the most abundant proteins in the membrane of erythrocytes, with, with sequence similarity to proteins which had been cloned from the roots of plants, from the brains of insects, something altogether different. So it was like, now it's like, my goodness, is it, what is it? It must be something very fundamental. And in fact, we were stuck. And we thought this must be a channel protein, or a channel of some sort. I was assured by all the experts that red cells did not have channels. Couldn't possibly be correct. And it was a discussion with a, a clinical mentor who was a very good physiologist who said that, in fact, red cells were believed to have channels for water, but no one had ever isolated that protein. Getting an inkling of an idea is only the beginning. Proving that idea experimentally is an entirely different matter. You know, the great discoveries are made by intensely um, focused individuals who who take a, a, a something incredibly difficult, seemly, seemingly impossible, and beat it to death until it yields. Well, there was a lot of frustration and a lot of banging my head against the wall, so to speak. I, I rarely did it literally, sometimes. <laughs> there are ups and downs. Let me rephrase it. There are failures. And maybe the number of failures is even greater than the number of successes. Failure for me is maybe, maybe better than success in many ways, because this is the lesson that will drive me to success at the end of the day. Even with an outlook this positive, it's not just failed experiments you have to contend with. After all, when you try to challenge an accepted theory, you're going to be met with a lot of resistance. You have to be prepared to fight your corner, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, if there's some question about whether you're right or not, then of course you better think it through very carefully. Uh, but if you feel you're right, then you should muster your arguments and, and absolutely fight for it. Even with the world against you, if the data is telling you that the textbooks are wrong, then there's no choice but to continue to keep polishing your experiments until there can be no doubt about your discovery. Then one day, either by chance or design, it all just comes together. When we expressed this new protein and just transferred the oocytes from isotonic solutions to distilled water, an amazing thing happened. They burst like popcorn. So there are a few different breakthrough stages, but that initial experiment where all of the test oocytes exploded like popcorn, we knew we had it. Genuine breakthroughs are few and far between. Perhaps it's the rarity of success that makes them all the more exciting. 
we were planning to do a specific experiment that would allow us to see the ions. We had you know, collected the data and I was processing it and very tired in the night and, um, and came to a point where I get to first look at it and I wasn't excited yet at all because I didn't think the experiment would work. You know, in principle it should work, but in principle lots of things should work. Um, you know, it would be too good to be true to work, but it did. I knew of experiments from almost 50 years before by Hodgkin and Keynes where they determined, they did a simple measurement but thought hard about it and said, you know, whatever this mechanism is that allows potassiums to cross the membrane, it has to involve something like two to three ions in a Q. That was 50 years ago and I was sitting there in the lab by myself at two o'clock in the morning looking at three ions in a Q. And I, you know, I was running you around. So the, I was running around in the lab with hysteria, uh, joy. You know, having seen this, to realize that you're getting it, you're kind of getting a little logic of nature for the first time. It's a, it's a, such an exciting feeling. And this is years, possibly even decades, before this discovery could have any possible use. The reward is just the pure wonder of seeing something completely new. We didn't know where it's going to lead. We didn't know that it's going to lead to understanding disease mechanisms. We didn't know that it's going to lead to drugs. We didn't know that it's going to rescue the lives of thousands of people. But we sense that it's novel, that nothing like that was discovered before. And then we said, well, we looked left, we looked right. There was no paradigm to follow. We went to the library. There was nothing like that. It was completely new. The moment there, was on one hand the moment of elation, but on the other hand the moment of loneliness. You are alone, nobody to ask. So it's kind of a mixed moment, but it was wonderful. These moments of elation are what keep chemists returning to their benches. And with armies of scientists toiling around the world, it does beg the question, will we ever run out of breakthroughs? The wonderful thing about science is that knowledge is endless. And for every question that we are answering, we are opening 10 new ones. And if to use the language that was used, I don't take the credit, of uh, a Nobel laureate in physics in 2004, David Gross, uh, the only product of knowledge is more ignorance. We are generating more unknown, which is beautiful because people are asking me, what will happen one day if we'll know everything? And I said, don't worry, this day will never come.